But I just want you to know one thing. Even if I can't prove that you were behind the threats to Standing Elk or what happened at my house last night, I want you to know something. Do you know what my next line is? No, but kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> putting up her own portrait in Aunt Geraldine's living room. I bet she didn't even ask permission. I've told Raven you're here, Scott. I oh. should be out in a minute. Well, thank you, Geraldine. Now, Skyler, dear, sit right down. I want to talk to you about something. Oh, now, just a moment. Let me see if I can anticipate. You are going to remind me to be kind and generous and gentlemanly. Something like that. <laughs> now, Geraldine, have you ever known me not to be? I wish you hadn't asked me that. Oh, you know that I've always been just the picture of gentlemanliness. I've been, uh, well, I've always been able to maintain my... Is that someone she coming around the corner? I always have. I went, well, one cup of flour. One, uh, and one cup of eggs, sugar. yes? Then you add the eggs. On the edge of night, Sky and Raven, two glamorous and powerful forces come together. And the magnetism is irresistible. Ryan's hope, the edge of night, love in the afternoon. All right, Nora. I'm afraid that's all my kind of medicine can do for you. You can go home now. Home? I'm shaking so badly I can't even walk straight. Oh, I think you'll be able to make it to the taxi stand on the corner. I don't think so. Barbara? Barbara? Barbara, stop blocking the outside door, for heaven's sake. I always tell you. You've got to leave this door you open. You paid me five dollars, Doctor, if I would lock you in. I'm sorry. Ring the phone. <laughs> it's for you. Yeah. Why did that happen? The scene was going so well. Call me if you find out anything more. Yeah, thanks, Ed. Good night. Ed Anderson, they've solved part of the problem upstate. They caught the man who was threatening Sky Whitney. Uh, now, what about Valerie? She wasn't with him when he was apprehended, but he claims no harm came to her. Well, where is she and Derek? They don't know. Apparently, this man Parrish stole Derek's car. One of the local officers flagged it down, thinking it was the chief driving. When they uh, tried to catch him, he, they, they did capture him. He didn't say anything about him? No. Apparently, they abandoned him somewhere. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> I thought I'd just go on there. Hey, I really love this. <laughs> then there's nothing I can say that will dissuade you. Nope. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the phone. Yeah. It's for you. Oh, thank you very much. Yes? Oh, can of corn would be fine, thank you. ESP. Take it off? Yeah, take your money out. I'll keep a jacket for you. Don't worry about it. There you go. Give me a jacket. Now, uh, turn up your shorts, your shirt sleeves. Go ahead. Yeah. All right, there you go. Now, loosen your tie, man. How's that? You feel more relaxed? Loose? Yeah, I do feel a little loose. Yeah? You know what you need now? Some inspiration. Take it, baby. Come here, baby. Uh, Check this out. This dude is an old friend of mine, and this is like his right. almost first visit to a disco. And I'm sure you'd just love to show him how to get a handle on things, wouldn't you? Huh? Sure, preacher. Well, I bet you would, baby. Now, you stick with her. You can't go wrong. You understand? You have a good time, all right? Thanks. 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 I'm uh, not too good at this. I just do what comes naturally. Nothing comes naturally. <laughs> That's it. You're going to do OK. Will I? Actually. 
Actually, mister, you don't need a partner. Just move it anywhere to go. All right. <laughs> hey, you doing good. <laughs> From the edge of night, the tasteful dance stylings of Sharon Gabbett and Dennis Parker. Also seeking new depths and questionable taste from the edge of night, Francis Fisher and Ernie Townsend. Enthusiastic about anything lately. What's the matter? Are things getting too rough down at the rock garden? No, no, rock garden's going great. I tell you, being an owner is the same thing as being a waitress. The only difference is I keep everything except the tips. You're not. couple of uniforms for order WMON. See what you can squeeze out of Peter Nevins. If he knows where Sky and Raven are, well, please go over and save their lives, all right? I'm on my way. If he knows where Sky and Raven are, do something. Will you go and save their lives? Where'd he go? <laughs> you know, Lois, I think the prayer would be better. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. On I your knees, Jody. Can we do that again? <laughs> you can throw your voice. Yes. All right. And I, then my breakfast. Yeah. Take, it from, take it from Derek's speech. <laughs> take it from Derek's speech. All right, let me think, okay? All right. Well, let me think. Calvin. Uh, Calvin. WMON, squeeze Nevins. <laughs> Round up a small team of uniforms. Go over to WMON and, and see what you can... And see and see what you can and 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 the Lord is my friend. <laughs> I don't like doing inserts. Okay. No, right. We're all right. I'm all right. This is Nick Nicholson's school board. <laughs> <Monday Park. laughs> How many times have I heard that today? You. This is Nick Nicholson's school. Oh. No oh. entrance requirements. <laughs> <laughs> see? See what they got? Get over to WMON. See what you can get. See what you can squeeze out of Peter Nevins. If he knows where Sky and Raven are, will you please go over and save their lives and come back here? I'm on my way, Chief. Geraldine, that's the best I can do. Thank you, Derek. I hope it's enough. Well, I'll pray for Preacher and Jody. <laughs> Thank Lord you. He <laughs> maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restores my Pretty hectic, eh? <laughs> I hope there's no more crime in Monticello today. Calvin told me he gave Derek a report. Derek thought I should know about it. So Calvin says Derek called my motel room in Fair River until quite late. Why didn't say? Why didn't say Dick? Dick, I said it. I can't say it. Nigga, no, I can't say it. I think it. Nigga, I can't snack. Took him a long time to figure that one out. You want me to put him down as one of our suspects? Uh, I'll do it. No, I'll no, no thank paper. you. No, thank you. I'd like to remain on the task force. There's got to be some other similarity between the two murders than just a 22 caliber pistol. Listen, what? What if the gee, the the gee, the gee? It's not a gee. It's a guy. <laughs> <laughs> The gee, gee, gee. No, no, Gee was on the show a while ago. He was nice. French, handsome. Didn't you, did you drop a line there? I can't get the thing open. Maybe I can open this. 
Here it is. <laughs> Listen. I heard a rumor. They need a couple people on the guiding line. This way, shall we go? What is this odometer doing in here? See, that, if that's... What, what is, how many... It was just a gift. I just happened to look in the oh, drawer. Oh, you didn't happen to find that necklace, Sharon. My name isn't Sharon. I know your name isn't Sharon. I was thinking this of that pretend. next door neighbor over there who lives next to the Clarks. Oh, it's Waven. We Wavin. have to make believe now. It's Waven. Look, I need your moral support. All right? Okay. <laughs> okay, you got it. All right. It's beautiful, man. <laughs> Here's to one wild and crazy night at Wilton College. <laughs> Not Wilson College. <laughs> College. <laughs> it's not Wimbledon. It's Wellington. not Wilton. It's Wellington. Well, I asked the chap at the desk if Mr. Whitney was indeed Mr. Schuyler Whitney, and he said yes. That was when I decided to come up and surprise you. But I called you first. Yes, well, to be perfectly honest, Ian, normally I don't care much for surprises. You see, I mean, they frequently end up becoming unpleasant. But surely not in this case. Well, in this case, I'm especially surprised. I mean, I thought you would be home in Monticello preparing for your upcoming marriage. I'm afraid that has been postponed. You've postponed your wedding, oh, come along. Yes, it would seem that Raven's stepfather in London is rather badly off. He's fallen ill for some extraordinary reason. <laughs> <laughs> I was sure you say he was rather badly dying. <laughs> I have a good idea. Why don't we turn on the 11 o'clock news and listen to other people's problems instead of talk about our own? Evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Peter Nevins. We begin our broadcast tonight with another... I'm sorry. Gee, they just blew it live. <laughs> Look at that idiot. He looks like a dope. Glad I... <laughs> sure glad I saw that station. It takes one to know one. Your egg for young is getting cold. Sorry about that phone call. Inspector Eastler? Hmm. They finally heard from Sky and Raven. And what about Carmen Engler? The Whitney's founder at the Engler chemical plant. Um, she was lost in some lethal gas, and then they found some bodies, and I don't know, got all mixed up in the egg few young. Uh, yeah. Sorry. And on the edge of night. What are you looking for? The magic of Raven casts an irresistible spell. Oh, tell me more. Encounter Raven at your own risk. One life to live, the edge of night, love in the afternoon. So you see both Uninet and Isis are owned by the Ultimax Group, which is in turn owned by Alicia Van Dyne. How involved were you? We had one of those on-again, off-again affairs. Whenever we'd find ourselves in the same city, New York, London, Paris, Tokyo. Madrid, places like that. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it was a little more on again than off again. And when did this uh, sordid little global affair end? After the proxy fight, we were supposed to get together to have lunch. She didn't show up, and I haven't seen her or spoken to her since. That's a shame. Yeah, it is. Skylar. So, that's the whole story. Now we know, don't we? What do we know? Who hated you enough to help Spencer steal your diamonds? Who hired Peter Nevins to humiliate you after you lost all your money? It was your old hag of an ex-flame, Alicia Van Dyne. Oh, I should have known sex was at the bottom of it. At least Adam didn't have his Christmas spoiled. That's one good thing about childhood. We mustn't let ours be spoiled either, not by anything. No, we won't. You're right. Even if that medical review board does suspend my license, I'm going to fight it. Oh, that makes me feel so good to hear you say that. I should have fought back a long time ago. I just didn't, didn't respect the strength of my enemy. That's all. 
Didn't respect the strength, didn't know what to say any time I... <laughs> well... Oh, yes, right. <laughs> At least Adam's Christmas wasn't spoiled. That's one good thing about childhood, isn't it? Well, we mustn't let ours be spoiled either, not by anything. No, you're right, we won't. And even if that medical review board does suspend my license, I'm gonna fight it. Oh, that makes me feel so good to hear you say that. I should have fought back a long time ago. Made a big mistake. I underestimated, underestimated my enemy. I just never real under my state. <laughs> well, listen, guys, this isn't funny. Come on, John Valenti's here. He's, you know, this is serious stuff. At least Adam's Christmas wasn't spoiled. That's one good thing about childhood. We mustn't let ours be spoiled either, not by anything. No, you're right. You're right, and we won't. Even if that medical review board does suspend my license, I'm going to fight it. Oh, that makes me feel so good to hear you say that. Fact so long ago, I just made a big mistake. I underestimated. It. I don't believe I can't talk. I want another big confession. <laughs> <laughs> that is the word. Underestimated the enemy. I'm worried about Calvin. Worried? Why? I don't know. I'm a cop, not a psychiatrist, so it's really hard for me to put my finger on it. But there's something about him that's. He's changed? Yes. He seems full of nervous energy these days. He's very insistent. He's very impatient. I mean, he can't even stand, you know, alone in a, in a corner for, for who knows how many. I can't. I'm sorry. Stand alone in a corner. He can't, he can't stand alone in a corner. Oh, shoot. Can't stand in a corner. Who is it? It's Beth. Just a minute. Yes, Beth. I'm sorry, Calvin, to um, disturb you, but I really. Come on in, I Beth. <sighs> Calvin. <laughs> now we're going to have to do it again. Nobody told me it was. Nobody told me that was supposed to happen. Nobody told me that was supposed to happen. Sorry, Mary. The good news is that we finally have enough evidence against Vincent Kale to haul him in. All right. Where to come from? Gary Shaw. He's under guard at a hospital right now, but his testimony definitely links Kale to Judd Wallace and the Wellington murders. These are Shaw's files. Kale recruited practically every kind of business skill computer programmers, uh, MBAs, uh, even art students. There were uh, two art majors who s oversaw. The whatchamacallit that they were going to do with it. <laughs> Boy, you tried so damn hard, too. I was just rooting for you. <laughs> a woman driving a delivery truck? Oh, it happens. Well, I'm not a chauvinist, just a realist. Statistically. And realistically. <laughs> I knew it. A woman driving a delivery truck? Yeah, it happens. Well, I'm not being a chauvinist, just a realist. Statistically, there are very few women in the delivery business. That's <laughs> 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 true. <laughs> Romance, intrigue, romance, um, 
everything. And, and romance. Yeah. I'm very proud of you. Oh, honey, thank you very much. I know it's just a first draft, but here we are, the first page. <laughs> I want to die. Uh. I'm going to need a couple of handkerchiefs. I just want to leave my tank. Save that one. Save that Thank one. <laughs> Uh, no, it's uh, it's the same type of building, and uh, he it's. Tell him about the envelope. I'm, get, I'm getting to that. Shoot, I can't think. Of it. Uh, cut. <laughs> the same time. Chris, whose side are you on? Look. If Dee Dee doesn't understand, that's one thing. If Beth doesn't understand, so what? They are not cops. You know what a cop learns? Get tough, but not too tough. Deal with all the horror. Oh, but... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Shoot. Taped in one studio. All of the different sets are arranged around the studio. It can become pretty hectic when there's a scene change, with cameras racing across the room to get ready for the director's next cue. I'm trying to work things out to deserve a little privacy. Deserve a little privacy. I gotta tell you that that lady was real interesting. Your husband had to keep that in mind. One of the reasons that The Edge of Night has been so successful over the years is the working environment itself. Think fast, Gunther. Uh, uh, just wait a minute. Jamie. Jamie. Come out here and untie me. Look, I don't want to play pirate anymore now. Come on. Untie me. I said just a minute. Jamie! Never fear, help's here. What are you doing here? I'm your local nurse, and I'm here to make you feel better. Well, for a moment there, I thought that I might get better. My, 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 this looks very serious. Now stick out that tongue. Come on, stick it up. Oh, that looks very good. Put that thing back in your mouth. How'd you get in here? So how's your temperature? It's rising every moment. Hey, that's what I thought. I asked how you got in here. Well, the door was ajar downstairs, and I didn't want to disturb anybody. Stupid Nora again. Now, don't talk. It's not good for you. Yeah, you think you know what's good for me, huh? Mm hmm I certainly me. do. Me. Now I'm here to make you feel better. People have died with less provocation than this. You're not going to die, especially after my special prescription. What's that? Chicken soup. Chicken soup? <laughs> oh, oh, you made chicken soup? Oh, that is funny. That is to laugh. You made chicken Are soup? Are you kidding? I got this in a restaurant. Now open your mouth. Come on. Drink, drink. Uh, don't get too close. I've got germs. So? Are you afraid? No. You're good. Just a lucky punch, that's all. No, no, you, uh, you wore me down with that lift. Come on, guys, open the door!
you're finally awake. It's not even nine o'clock yet. You really didn't hear that baby howling, did you? Mm -mm. I tried to wake you up, but you wouldn't budge. You should have just fed him chocolate that always shuts him up. Damn you, Raven. Do you expect me to believe that? I'll see you tonight. I'll see you tonight, but it's got to be very late, okay? Um, listen, I have to go. The baby's crying. I got to put his diaper on, okay? Bye bye. April. Where's the frying pan? Frying pan? What's it look like? The answer is yes. What did you say? I said I want to be Mrs. Derek Mallory. Are you serious? Yes! I want to marry you. same thing sir oh no 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 this this is my wedding this one here this is it this is all i swear i am never going to go through this again uh mr whitney uh i just want to say oh uh, now what are you going to do you're going to give me the, the pre-wedding speech I, sorry i, I don't i, I don't want to hear that uh, uh no, you no, got a match? no nothing like that i know it's not necessary but uh i just hope that you've done the right thing sir. Control. Stunning. No, that's that's an understatement. <laughs> he is so wonderful, and he is so generous. Certainly is. Yes, and I have no idea what I say next. Shit. And uh, you've got something for him too, I bet. All uh, right. On the edge of night. I am starting over since I am now Raven Alexander again. I can't stay single forever. It's unnatural. Not for you, it would be. You've made marriage a vocation. One life to live. The edge of night. Weekdays. How are you? You won't believe what I just saw it in the jink. Oh, let's hope uh, Alicia jumped out a window. No, but something almost as surprising. Like what? Lane Wilton practically attacked Nancy Carr publicly, like right out in front of the uh, reception desk. I had to practically pull him off of her. My hero. <laughs> Lane stormed out. It was really weird. I don't get it. I always thought this guy was straight-laced, boring, you know? It was weird to see him that pissed off. <laughs> oh. I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Well, thank you for the information. I think we better go. No, Raven, not yet, please. Tell me how you are. What do you mean by that? Getting along any better with Mrs. DeGroote? Oh, what do you think? It's considering the phone call you got from Skylar the other day, I uh, understand you're not getting along very well. Considering the phone call I got from Skylar the other day. Considering the phone call I got from Skylar the other day. Shut. <laughs> <laughs> Now, this is very important. What movies? The ones we all went to. Oh, Jamie, you, you didn't tell Skylar that you and I went to the movies with your dad, did you? Then what happened? Hello, uh, 864-42345. Oh, this is in Switzerland. I better say this in German. 864-423-45, bitte. Who is this? Who did you say this was? Who? It's for you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. 
Well, I know. I. Judge Poole, this is Derek Mallory. I need a search warrant right away. This is an emergency. I would appreciate it, yes. The Regent Towers, apartment 4B. <sighs> Eric what? Blake. Eric Blake. That's right. Calvin's going to be there to pick it up. You're not holding out any more surprises for me, are you? <laughs> I didn't know how far so I could nice. go. Oh, that was, that was nice. That was nice. nice try, though, Dennis. That was wonderful. <laughs> right. Okay, thanks again. Yeah, and you be careful. Yeah, bye, Sheriff. Oh, well, that's it, then. Sheriff said the river road's underwater and officially closed to traffic, which means you and I are stuck here for the duration, partner. Do you think Robertson Crusoe? No, Robinson Crusoe. I never told you that story? Hello? Hello, Chris. It's Derek. <sighs> Derek, hi. What's oh. wrong? Well, uh, haven't been any strangers around there, have there been? No, and I don't expect any. Why do you say that? Well, all that snow you said we were passing on the way out here is melted. There's been a lot of local flooding in the, the rivers underwater. Oh, good. I'm so glad to the hear road. That. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> the rivers underwater? <laughs> <laughs> the river is underwater? You know, Humpty Dumpty, all the king's horses and all the king's men. No, 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 we don't want that. We want something really good, don't we, Jamie? Oh, well, how about cherry pie? Oh. Chocolate cake, maybe? Or ice cream? Yes, cream? yes, yes, yes. You, you want it all? Yes, um, with two orange sodas. Orange sodas. I got you. Didn't I promise you we were going to have a good time? And this is only the beginning. What is this place? This is what is known as a dive, Jamie. D I V E. see a grown man cry with no, no, let go of me, you big ape! Now, me tossing a huge jig, baby. No, leave me alone, you bald thing! Now, why did you say that? That's a terrible thing to say to a guy or a bald thing. What's wrong with being bald? Bald is beautiful. Ah. <laughs> Hi, Nora. Uh, how are you? I'm fine, but you don't look so good. Now, well, uh, how did you know I was here? Intuition. I had a feeling you'd be here with your little playmate. If you don't want to lose your job, you better get home as fast as you can. Explain to Mr. Whitney where you are, unless, of course, you want me to do it. Well, actually, I just lost track of time, so... Oh, I know. Time flies when you're having fun. But will Mr. Whitney understand? And will he understand that you were lured here by a... A little lady, you couldn't get a man any other way. It's a lie! He forced his uh, way! Now, wait a minute. I just came by here to deliver a package, you know, to the Whitney Theater. That's all. Uh, you, you coming, Nora?
7159194B, take one. Seven one five nineteen four B take two. Any new word on her assailant? No, we've sifted through most of the employees at Image, Inc. And? Well, there's only one that we find has ever had any past connection with her at all. Please. Uh, clock's run out. Clock's run out? Yeah. For 10 seconds. <laughs> we have a whole, this, we has a whole nother, there's a whole nother scene in this act? Mine. <laughs> oh, Richard, one Richard. Line. Talking one line here. Okay, well. We'll do it faster. And on the edge of night. Why are you chasing me around here like this? And what is this ploy? You have a lot of nerve. You must be drunk. You wouldn't be trying to make somebody here jealous. One life to live. The edge of night. Weekdays. to bed soon. Load mine. I love to watch you handle guns. Perfume. Mmm, I smell cheap alcohol. Oh, well. <laughs> Kiss my toes, will you? I think it'll warm me up. Do you want to hear the rest of this or not? Yes, I do, but I can't listen when I'm cold. Mm. All right, uh, stick your feet in between my calves. All right. Yo! <laughs> your feet are cold. I told you. Well, I put them in slowly. Now, uh, now I, uh, <laughs> yeah. where did she put her foot, Larkin? <laughs> On my yeah. Shiatsu yeah. memory point right there. That's right. <laughs> Don't do that anymore. I can't remember when you hit that point. Oh, I'm in my own house again. The world is beautiful. What's that, Mrs. 
I said the world is beautiful. Everything is all right. Uh.